How you doing there? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Daf Nunei, Daf 55 of Masech the Bavakama, friends, 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 friends. Today's Daf is cool. It's like um, cool. It's like um, I don't think it's that hard. Maybe uh, uh, you got to use your noggin and stickle, but you know. Um, all right, then we start a new parak on Nunhaim with Bays. Perak Hakonis Tzon Ladir, um, which is Perak six out of ten. So I guess in a certain sense, however, we're like in a certain sense we're like halfway through Bava Kama, which is Givaldig. That's awesome, Chaver. Halfway through Bava Kama, this big leaks, Chaver, big leaks. Uh, it's the morning again. I have a uh, coffee. Another morning, another coffee. Ah, uh, Givaldig. All right. Um, and I got my Gemara, I got my coffee, I got my friends at Babylon Talmud. Let's go weiter. All right, we're going to start on Daphne Dalim and Bez, two lines from the bottom. Shorab Chanina ben Ogil, Esrubchi bar Abba, Mipnema bedibris harishonis, lo nemar boim tov, uvedibris achronis, nemar boim tov. Bum bum. So Rebchanina ben Ogil asked Rebchi Yabar Abba, how come in the first Dibris, right, of course there were two versions, right, there, right, there was the, there was the, there was the, there was the, uh, there was the tablets that Moses broke, and then he got another uh, set of tablets. So how come in the first ones, it does not say the word Tov, but in the second ones, it does say Tov. As Rashi points out, it says, Leman Yitav Loch, by Kibur Avayim. So Omar Lo, so Rebchi Yabar Abba responds, a very peculiar answer, so there's the Marsha adds low. Let's add low. Lama low nemar baim tov. Rather than asking me why don't they say tov in the first dibris shalini im nemar baim tov. Let me ask me ask me if they say tov im lav or not. Okay. Sheni odei im nemar baim tov im lav because I don't know. Okay. Kalech eitzel reb tanchum bar chani loy. Go and ask of Tanchum by Chani Loi, Shoya Rogil, Eitzel, Bishur, Ben Levi, Shoya Boki, Ba, Godo, Ho, Ho. Why don't you go and ask of Tanchum by Chani Loi, who would spend a lot of time with Rabbi Yeshua Ben Levi, who was a Boki, an expert, when it came to Agode, when it came to uh, Agode. When it came to, um, how do you define Agode? Uh, uh, exposition, maybe? Oza Legabe, so Reb so Reb Chanina ben Ogil he goes to Reb Tanchum bar Chani Loi. Omer Reb Tanchum bar Chani Loi says, "B'menu lo shamaiti." I never heard this from Reb Shimon Levi. Elakach Omer Li Shmu bar Nochim Achi Imul Shor Reb Acho Reb Chanina v'Amilo Av Imul Shor Reb Acho Reb Chanina. Okay, we had a shtickle uh, taste of Yevamis over there. I don't know whose brothers and sisters or what, but I I, I don't think it really matters from Shat and the Gemara. Hol v'Sofen the Ishtaber. Ho ho. Well, because as we know, ultimately the uh, the first tablets were broken, and because the first tablets were broken, it doesn't say the word tov good. But so what? Okay, so the first ones were broken. Why does that mean that it can't say the word tov in them? Because it was going to bro- be broken. There were a lot of stuffs written in there. How come just not the word tov? So, Amar Vashi Chaz Vishalim Paskatovim Yisro. Because God forbid. That good, that tov should be broken, should 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 be uh, stopped from Israel. Ooh, wow, my coffee. Coffee is tov. Is coffee gematria tov? Probably not. Definitely not. Is definitely not the gematria of tov. Maybe it's tov in atbash. What's tov in atbash? Maybe. At, what's Tov and Atbash? It might be the same thing. I, I don't know though. Atbash, Gar, Dak, uh, uh, then what? Hats, Vap. So, oh, oh, that's a pay. And then Bet would be Shin. So Shin and Pei. And then what's Tess? At? 
so if we just well, actually it shouldn't be too hard. Uh, so we said vap and then uh, 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 za and then chas and then tan. So nun, so nun, shin, and um, pei. Pei and nun is 130. Shin is 300. 430. 430. And what's cafe? No, that's 185. All right. Let me tell you. In the meantime, I'm just going to drink my coffee. All right. Now, um, Rabbi Yeshua says Rabbi Yeshua, although there's a letter that says maybe Rabbi Yeshua and Levi, which would make sense because we're talking about Rabbi Yeshua and Levi. I wrote Tes Bachlomo. If a person sees the letter Tes in a dream, Simen Yofalo, it's a good sign. My time, I'll come Ilim, Mushum Dirsev Tov. If you're going to say, well, because Tes is Tov. Ema, Vitete Siev, my Taite Hashmid. But you also have the Pasuk of uh, uh, sweeping with a destructive broom. Not a good thing. Chad test but we're talking about one test, not two tests. It's not tetesia. Alright. Ema bishulel. What about the pasuk from Icha? Tumasu bishulel. That's also a negative thing with the test. Test beis kaminon. Yeah, but test beis, not tumasu, but uh, you know tovs. But ema tavu baritz shareya. But oichet from Icha says tavu baritz shareya that the that the that the gates uh, sunk into the ground. Also not a good thing. Elaholu fasach by akos of the teva. Trila shemi brachis at vayare loikim as haorki tev loik ziv tes bam bam. The reason why tes is good vibes is because um, the reason why tes is good vibes is because from the beginning of the Torah until the first appearance of the letter tes or have a tes. There is no appearance of the letter tes in the Torah until the word tov. The first appearance of the letter tes in the word uh, in the Torah is in the context of tov of good. And therefore, test is inherently good. And if you see test in your dream, you're good. So again, I'm going to read it again. Ella, halufasach by akos of the tevet chila. That since the pasuk, you know, opened up with the letter test in good vibes, shemi breishis ad vayar loikim es arki tov loikim es test because from breishis until vayar loikim es arki tov, there's no appearance of letter test. There's a guy who I know. No, there's a girl who I know who knows a guy. That his Instagram handle is Tess Vibe. Maybe, maybe it was Mechavin to, 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 the, to this Gemara. That uh, Tess is good vibes. If a person sees a eulogy in his uh, dream, they had mercy upon him from the heavens and they redeemed him this is if it's the word hespit is written out you see like in a dream like a piece of paper and scribbled on the paper is hey samach pay dalit hespit so then it means that they had mercy on you um, in the heavens and they redeemed you I'm going to drink more of this good coffee all right so we said yesterday in the Mishnah that whenever we talk about Behema, we also mean Chaya and Of Oichet. Amr Shlokish says, Shlokish Kanshana Rebbe. Here Rebbe uh, uh, taught. Um, let me see if I can remember the translation of these things. Tarnagol Tavis Ufasioni. So Tarnagol is a chicken. A Tavis is a peacock, I think maybe. And a Pasioni was a um, uh, hmm, something weird. A a uh, the fasioni was a uh, pre uh, I don't know like a presence or something it's something I don't know what it is um, a a um, I, something I don't remember what it is a, a chicken a peacock and a uh, something that I don't know what it is so so if if these three things the uh, the the chicken the peacock and the thing that I don't know what it is so kilaim is a buzzer. They um, they um, they have kilaim. They can't mate with each other. Pshita is obvious. Amr Reb Chaviva says Reb Chaviva Mishum the Rabu by the Adadi Ma'u the Tema Min Chadu Kamashban. Well, since they all like you know grow up together in the same like uh, chicken coop or something, so I might think that they can you know mate with one another. It would not be an issue. So Kamashman that it is an issue. Amr Shmuel Amr Shmuel says Shmuel Avos va'Avos Abar kilaim is a buzzer. That a goose and a wild goose cannot mate with one another. They're separate species. Maskifla, Rove, 
bei Ravchonen, bei Ravchonen aus der Kasche, bei Time Alkom, Ile, Mishum, der Hai Orich Kuei, der Hai Zutter Kuei. If because one of them has a long beak and the other has a short beak, the meata gamla pais of a gamla tayo. But what about a Persian camel? Sorry, mom. And a and a Arab camel. And the high olim kuei, the high cotton kuei. That this one has a I don't know a, a thick uh, neck and the other one has a thin neck. Achinami de havu kilaim zebaza. So we say that these two camels can't mate with one another. With one another. Elam rabai rather says rabai zebates of mibachos zebates of mibifnim givaldik that a a, 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 I don't know. One of them has its testicles on the outside, and one of them has the testicles on the inside. Givaldi. Rav Pope Amr says, Rav Pope, Hatuna chad beis abishichla vatuna kam beis abishichla. I guess that the female goose and and wild geese uh, uh, have. Uh, there's a difference between how many eggs in a gestation period. Uh, uh, one of them has one, and uh, the other one has uh, multiple. Um, Somebody who uh, 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 mates together two different types of um, aquatic species. Loke, we, so we give the fellow makis. My time, how come? Because it says by the people, on, by, by the ground uh, creatures and also by the water creatures and therefore kilayim is not allowed by any of them. What if a fellow, um, 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 you know, because there, there's a, there's a, um, there's a, 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 I believe is what the Pasuk says. You can't plow a field with an ox and a donkey together because they, they plow at different paces and, 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 and it won't be fair to, you know, it's a mess. Two oxen, two donkeys, not one and one. So what if, can you use, can you have, so what if you're like walking by the shore and you have, right, uh, what if you have a goat and some kind of a fish, so you're walking right next to the shore and you have a goat and you have a fish and they're pulling epis, uh, so is that allowed? Do we say that, well, because a goat is not going to go into the water and the fish is not going to come onto the dry land, so they're considered separate and therefore... You know, I guess it wouldn't be considered like you know you're that like they're doing something together because they're in separate environments. Or it doesn't matter. You're you're pulling whatever you're pulling with these two different species, and it's a problem. Maskifla Ravina Ravina says by this logic, What if you put a, 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 a wheat kernel and a barley kernel in your hand, and you plant the wheat kernel in Eretz Yisrael, and then right on the other side of the border is Chutz Laretz, and you plant them. Should we say that that should be Kilaim? No, of course it's not Kilaim. One of them is in Eretz Yisrael, the other one is Chutz Laretz. So here also, of course it should not be an issue. One of them is on the ground, one of them is in the water. To which the Gemara says, that's not a good proof, because over there, Eretz Yisrael is a place that is Chayiv in uh, where Kilaim is a problem. Chutzlarts is not Shaykh to climb. It's Mitzvah Atliya Baharts. It's not Shaykh to climb in Chutzlarts. And therefore, you know, one, one thing is happening in a place where it's not allowed. The other thing is happening in a place where it is allowed. But in this context, you can't do, you can't have, you know, a goat and a sheep together on, I guess you probably can't mate a goat and a sheep, but you can't do Kilaim, whether it's on the land or whether it's in the water. You can't take different fish, as we said, and put them together. So therefore, they're both in environments in which it's a problem. So, you know, it's, so it's, it's not, that's not a good example. And I guess we don't, we don't necessarily resolve the question if you try to pull up this with a goat and a fish. We will come back to you. Uh, ox that gored a cow. That was Givaldi. All right. Um, I'm going to drink a little more coffee. All right, friends. Now we start the next parak. The parak of Hakonis Tzon the deer, a fellow who brings a sheep into some kind of sheep enclosure thingy. I don't think that's the technical name for it. It must have a different name. Vino Bifanea, and he locks the door. Karoi, properly, nothing major, right? As we're going to see, right, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a Shmir Prusa. It's that he locks the door, 
And it's an enclosure that, you know, in normal environments would be a proper enclosure. Now, if a, if a hurricane comes and blows it away, yeah, it will be blown away. It's not Shmir Ma'ula, right? It's not like, uh, you know, high, high, uh, high maximum security. But uh, he brought the sheep into the enclosure thingy. He closed the door and so. So Akonis Tzon a fellow, uh, brings a sheep into the sheep enclosure thingy. And he locks the door, Karoi, properly. The Yotze Vizika, but it gets out and it damages Potter. He's Potter because he did what he needed to, to do. He locked the door. Lo no al but if he didn't lock the door, so he was negligent, Karoi, the Yotze Vizika, Chayv. Well, then he, you know, he goes out and it damages. Of course, he's going to be Chayv. He didn't lock the door. Nifritz of Alayla, Hushapatua, listen. So if it was locked properly, but then, uh, I don't know, the wall fell down, or, you know, something happened at night and, and, you know, a wall fell down, whatever it is, or Hushapatua, listen, or bandits broke in. And then the sheep got out, Vizika, and it, it damaged, it started eating people's fields and stuff, potter. So he's potter because, um, I guess it's onus, right? Now, let's see, Ua list him. Um, now, if, uh, if, if bandits came and they took the sheep, well, then list him, Chayov. Well, now the, the bandits are, are, are responsible. Hinicho Bechama, if um, he left, so if, if the, the, the person brings the sheep in and he closes the door properly, but, 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 the, but the sheep enclosure thingy is outside in the sun, which is, you know, that, uh, so obviously the sheep is going to be, you know, you know, uh, uh, is going to do whatever it can to get out of the, you know, the, 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 the sheep enclosure thingy is in the sun. There's no shade there. There's nowhere for it to go. So obviously the sheep is going to try to do whatever it can to escape the enclosure thingy. To get out of the sun, so inicha b'chama. If the fellow left the um, sheep in the in the sun, or shemasher lecherish to v'kotin, or or transferred the sheep to a cherish a shoyte a kotin v'yotzav izika, and then the uh, um, um, uh, sheep gets out and damages chayv, he's going to be chayv in that scenario. Masher leroya, if he gives the sheep to a shepherd, nichnas haroya tachtav. So now it's the shepherd's responsibility to make sure that the sheep does not. Cause any damage. If uh, the sheep falls off of the roof of the of the owner, and it's an onus, it just kind of falls off the roof somehow into somebody else's garden and starts eating stuff over there. So then, uh, so the the owner needs to pay for the hano. Let's go back to for a second. Yarda kedarka, but if the sheep simply just descended regularly into this uh, garden vizika and started eating stuff and caused damage so you have to pay for the damages right we have seen this before i believe what's the difference between paying for what it benefited versus paying for the damages so paying for the damage is paying for the damage right as we're going to see in a second exactly what how we calculate that but let's just say if it ate a hundred dollars worth of uh, stuff so you pay a hundred dollars let's say okay so but mashenenis would be different kilo if he normally feeds his uh his uh sheep uh um, you know, a normal meal for a sheep would cost him ten dollars. So, so he saved ten dollars by his sheep, you know, getting a meal out of out of this adjacent property. But he's not going to pay. You know, you know, you know that adjacent property had gourmet stuff. He doesn't have to pay for the gourmet stuff. He doesn't have to pay for what he damaged. He has to pay for the fact that you know his his, his sheep benefited, and now we, you know, the owner doesn't have to pay for his uh, lunch. For the sheep's lunch, because he already ate lunch, so normally lunch costs the owner ten dollars. So he pays the guy ten dollars, not the hundred dollars worth of damage that he cost. How do we calculate what was damaged? So what we do is, so instead of saying, well, it ate a hundred dollars worth of stuff. No, what you do is you, you look at it in bulk. You look at the field as a whole. What's the value of the field with the row uh, that it was eaten what's the value of the field without it now and you pay that difference it comes out to uh it comes out to less reb shimon omer says reb shimon och le peris gimurim mishalem is peris gimurim reb shimon qualifies this and he says look if the sheep ate ripe proper fruits that were ready to be eaten then the owner of the sheep has to pay in full but uh, where am I? Peris gemurim im saw saw im saw saim saw saim whatever it ate a saw saw saim whatever it ate uh, uh, the owner is gonna have to pay. But if the fruits were not yet ripe and not yet ready, so that is when you kind of look at the value within the larger context of the field, and it's going to come out to less money. I'm just gonna drink more coffee. 
Says the Gemara. Turn her upon him. The rabbi said, Ezu karo'ui ve'ezu shelo karo'ui. What's considered a proper closing and what is considered an improper closing? Look, a door that could just withstand a, an ordinary wind. Kind of a, an enclosure that, that would suffice in sort of ordinary uh, 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 settings. So that is, so that is karo'ui. But, you know, if you put it in an enclosure that, right, that's really a pretty shvach enclosure that even, you know, any, any wind comes, this thing's going to go flying away and, 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 and the sheep is going to be home free. That is, Im, that, that is an improper closing. Omri of money by Patish, Mantana Muad Desagile Bishmir Prusa. Oh, so so money by Patish asks, who is the Tana who says that by a Muad, a shmira prusa like this, that just locking a door with an enclosure that can withstand a, an ordinary wind, but not an unordinary wind, that's enough. So now a sheep, a sheep is not going to go gore anybody, right? 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 The, I, the assumption seems to be that there's no Karen when it comes to a sheep. Karen is going to eat stuff, maybe he's going to walk on stuff. There's Shane, there's Regal. Shane and Regal are both Muad Olam. So therefore the Shaila is, if we're talking about, you know, shmira prusa in the context of Shane and Regal, that means that we're talking about shmira prusa in the context of Muad. So Ramani Bar Patish asks, I'm going to read that again, Mantana Muad Desagile Bishmir Prusa. So who is the one who says that by a Muad, like this sheep, so how do we know, so who says that Shmir Prusa would be enough, that simply locking the door sort of in a regular scenario would be enough, even though it wouldn't be able to withstand an unordinary wind, but as long as it can withstand an ordinary wind, that would suffice. Rebuhudi, that's Rebuhudi, the Tanat, as we learn in the Mishnah, Kashu Kashu Bailov b'Moser of Noah b'Fun of if the um, owner um, I think of an ox uh, yeah of an ox uh, uh, sort of tied it and locked the door Karoy just a regular right Shmir Prusa v'Yotza v'Hizik and it gets out and it damages Echotam v'Echad Mur Chayv Div Rav Meir so Rav Meir says whether the shore is a shore Mur whether the shore is a shore Tam it makes no difference you will be Chayv. Um, because Shmir Prusa, according to Reb Meir, does not work neither for a short time nor for a short mood. However, Reb Yudah Omer says, Reb Yudah Tam Chayev Muad Potter. A short time would be Chayev for a Shmir Prusa, but a short mood would be Potter if there was a Shmir Prusa. And we learned that out from Psukim. Shenei Amai Velo Yishmerenu Bailav V'Shomer Hu Zed. By a short mood, it says Velo Yishmerenu. We learned about this the other day, and it's guarded, so therefore it would be potter. So, Rabbi Yudha says that a Shmir Prusa works by a Muad. Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Eliezer said, Ein lo Shmir el Asakin, whereas Rabbi Eliezer says that when we're talking about Ashur Amuad, then there is no guarding whatsoever. The only thing you can do is kill it and eat it. Um, so, so we see that um, according to Rabbi Yehuda, a Shmir Prusa works for a short Muad, but not for a short Tam. According to Rabbi Meir, a Shmir Prusa does not work at all, not for a short Muad, nor for a short Tam, but a short, but a Shmir Meula, you know, a, that, right, that would be able to withhold, withstand a very strong wind, um, that would suffice for a Tam and a Muad. Um, and Rabbi Yehuda says nothing will suffice, you have to just eat it. So, we want to say that while well, our mission is saying that Shmir Prusa is enough by a sheep, and a sheep is a mood, uh, because we're only talking about chain for regal, so if we're saying Shmir Prusa is enough, it must be like Rabbi Yehuda, and for the Gemara Nisht, Afilu Tema, Rabbi Meir, you can even say that our Mishnah is like Rabbi Meir because shiny chain for regal. Look, chain and regal are different than Karen. When Reb Meir said that Shmir Prusa does not work, that was by a shore in the context of Karen. Um, and he's saying that Shmir Prusa doesn't work. But when it comes to a, 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 a Shane and Regel, Shmir Prusa is enough. That Torah Miato that the Torah itself uh, chills out a bit on the requirements for uh, uh, guarding them. The Amr Belazu, the Rebelazu says, I bought Devarim Hatere. Miato bishmirosin. There are four things that the Torah said. Look, even just basic guarding suffices. Veluhein. These are the four examples: bore, a pit; veish, a fire; shein, a tooth eating; veregel, and walking on stuff. Bore, 
a pit tichsiv, as it says, kivtach ishbor or kiyichre ishbor. If a fellow digs or opens up a pit, velo yichasenu. And the problem is that he didn't cover it. Hakiso, but if he covered it, potter, then it will be potter. So simply covering it is enough. You don't have to fill it in or anything. Eish, when it comes to fire, tichsiv shalom yishalom amabir sabeirut. That that the that the fellow who made the fire at the ovid kein mavir, you have to like make the fire. As Asher says, posheya. You have to you have to be negligent. But as long as you're not being negligent by 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 uh, by Aish, you'll be potter. Right? It's, uh, it's just basic guarding is enough. Shane, when it comes to eating, the chiv uvir b'steacher ad the ovid kein uvir that 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 that, uh, that the that the animal eats in another field. But apparently, it has to be like a sort of uh, kind of like a negligent kind of eating. Like I guess the owner i guess uh, set up a scenario in which the in which the uh, the animal was going to eat in another field so again so it has to be sort of negligent but any basic kind of guarding otherwise would be enough rego walking uh, so also, also there i guess the, it would have to be negligent but any kind of basic guarding would be enough uh, in the context of regel. Betani, we learn the price of Vishilach the regel. As we learned, this this is like mamish from the beginning of the Masechta. Is this even base? Yeah, that base and base. Vishilach the regel. The Vishilach is referring to regel. V'chein Omer Mishalche regel Ashor ve'Achomer. Okay, so Vishilach is regel. Uvir the Ashen. That Shane V'chein Omer Kasher Yivar Hagolo. We said the Golo is referring to eating because it's like the teeth that are revealed and Ad Tumo. Fine, it's fine. Okay. So time of the Ovid Kein Vishilach Uvir. So the reason why he'd be chayiv by Shein and Regel is because it was Be'etzim Be'yadayim. It was Posheya. Halo Ovid, Lo. But if it was, if there was a basic level of guarding, so then it would be enough and you would be Potter. Am Rabba and says Rabba, Masnis and Amiteka, that this is also inferred from our Mishnah, like we're saying, that our Mishnah can even be like Reb Yehuda, uh, can even be like Reb Meir, and that, and that, uh, Shemir Prusa would suffice, according to Reb Meir, for Shane and Regel, because the Katan Itzon. Because all of a sudden, Chever, as I've been pointing out, we're almost halfway through Mesech the Bavakama. Mesech the Bavakama is 120 pages or so. We're on 55. We're, 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 we're nearing the halfway mark. Chavit, we've been talking for the most part about oxen until now. All of a sudden, we get up to the sixth parak. Parak six out of ten. All of a sudden, hakone tzon ladir. All of a sudden, we're no longer talking about oxen. We're talking about sheep. Why? How come the sudden change? Right? Where am I? The whole time we've been talking about oxen. This is sure. Let's continue talking about oxen. Ma'ishna the katani tzon. How come it's saying sheep? It's not because there's a different level of guarding when it comes to sheep, and that's what we're discussing. Is it not because by sheep we're not talking about Karen? We're talking about Shane and Regal. And we're talking about Shane and Regal, that they are Muad, and that Shmir Prusa is enough for them, and we can say that it's even according to Reb Meir that uh, because things are Reb Meir would treat a, a, a sheep, where it's Davka Shein Viregel different than he would treat a, the Karen by a Shor Chaver. That was Dav Nun Hey of Mesech I think it was a relatively interesting Dav. We had some interesting Agarita on uh, on, on the uh, on the right the test vibes on the Nun Hey Umeralf. And then we talk so the next parak where we talk about sheep Hakonis Tzon Ladir. We discuss Shmir Prusa and discuss is it Reb Yehuda, is it Reb Meir? Very interesting stuff. Have a great day. Peace out.